Okay, Mr. Watson here, and in this video we're going to be looking at movement analysis. So we're going to be looking at putting all of this joint type, um, muscle contraction type, um, and mention of the, the role all together. Okay, we're going to put all of this together. Okay, um, very common questions in the exam, I see them or a lot, you'll, all, you'll get a diagram pretty much in every paper and you'll be getting a little table worth five or six marks. And that can range from um, articulating bones, uh, joint type, contraction type, main agonist, okay? So let's have a look at a few examples and I will try my best to clear up some of the common mistakes that happen in questions like this. Um, involving the use or um, to do with gravity and I mentioned this in my last video and I said there'd be a video coming and here it is okay so let's start with a sporting movement a sporting movement rather than a physical exercise and um, that you might see more in a gym setting so let's start with a jump shot in basketball now what Cambridge like to do they like to do the movement from point A to point B. Okay, so what it rarely asks you to do is just analyze a standing still picture. So obviously if we were to look at this hip now, we can see it's in flexion, okay? But we're rarely asked to do that. But what you can do from point A, because what doesn't change is the joint and the joint type and the articulating bones. So here we've got ball and socket. Okay, to the hip, it's a ball and socket joint, multi-axial. And we've got the femur and pelvis as the articulating bones. So that won't change once it gets to the point B. Okay, um, and then we've got the knee, same thing, look, as we can see right now, knee is in flexion, but we're not interested in that. We're interested that it's a hinge joint, and the femur, tibia, and fibula are the articulating bones. So that's what you can always do from the first image. Okay, but what's natural for Cambridge to ask you is point A to point B. So let's take a look at what happens with the hip and the knee in a jump shot in basketball. And let's call this point B. If we look at the hip now, what we should be able to identify is the hip during that movement from A to B has extended. It's in extension. Now, what extends the hip? Gluteus maximus. Okay, works in an antagonistic pair with the iliopsoas, but the gluteus maximus extends our hip. What type of contraction? Okay, so gluteus maximus, sorry, main agonist. The main agonist. What type of contraction? Concentric. Okay, the gluteus maximus length has shortened while it contracted okay so fairly simple stuff and i always find personally the sporting images easier to analyze what's happened at the knee well we've had extension again what extends the knee what is the main agonist the quadriceps group now ideally you'll be saying rectus femoris vastus lateralis vastus medialis but for the sake of this presentation, I put a little star to remind me to tell you um, to write the four foot quadriceps group here. And concentric, again, the as we extend the knee, your quadricep shortens in length and it con uh, as its contraction type. Okay. But there are other joints at play here. So let's stay on the jump shot. The wrist condyloid joint, radius, ulna, and carpals. Never forget the carpals, okay? Radiocarpal joint is our focus, AS Cambridge. The, so radius, ulna, and the carpals. The elbow, hinge, humerus, radius, ulna. The ankle, hinge, radius, ulna, and the talus. Now I want to make one point here. Most people are unsure what to say here about in this static picture what's happening at the ankle. Um, and this is why it's important to be able to not only name 
movement types, but being able to describe it. So as we can see there, it's in dorsi flexion. Now, you might be thinking, oh, but the toes aren't pointing to the shin. Possibly not. But what's happened is there's a decrease in joint angle, uh, angle there for, through flexion, dorsi flexion. So by understanding what it means, it'll help you there. But anyway, back on track. A to B. We'll call this point B. What's happened at the wrist? Okay, we can see now the wrist is in flexion. It's gone from extension to flexion. Okay, what flexes the wrist as the main agonist? Wrist flexors. Concentric. Now, concentric is we want a forceful contraction. Okay, he wants to shoot the ball. Okay. Elbow from flexion to extension. What extends the elbow? Triceps brachii. Concentric. Okay. Triceps brachii has shortened in length as it, as it extends the elbow joint. The ankle joint, what's happened, as I've already mentioned on the static, dorsi flexion. So as you can see now, the toes are pointing down. We've had a movement of the heel upwards and we have plantar flexion, okay, which is the gastrocnemius. And don't forget the soleus. But again, for the sake of this presentation, I've just put one um, and another concentric contraction. The length has shortened. Um, which you could just figure out if you point your toes down and feel your gastrocnemius. Okay, so that's the jump shot. It gave us um, a lot of joints to unpack there. Okay. Now we're going to go into, what, let's just say, a gym setting um, and where most of the common mistakes are made, where gravity becomes involved. Now, of course, it was involved in the jump shot, but sometimes in the exam you'll be asked A to B, and then B to A, okay, it wants both movements. So we're going to look at a push-up, a press-up in the upwards phase. So here's point A. We're going to focus on the elbow, which is a hinge, and I'm going to skip through this, we should know, okay, and we're going to focus on the shoulder, okay. Humerus and scapula there is articulating, so that one's different. Our last ball on soccer was the hip that we looked at in the jump shot. So we're going to look at the upwards phase. So obviously he's up. There's our point B. Now, I personally, if I answer these questions, or when I did when I was a student, I all, if it, if we're asked to um, analyze both stages, I always start with the upwards phase. Usually, I find the going against gravity, trying to overcome gravity, easier. And I'll tell you why. It's usually concentric, or always is. So here at the elbow. We've gone from flexion into extension. Now here, okay, two things can come into play. If you have knowledge of why we do a press-up, you know we do press-ups um, mainly for the, the triceps brachii and the pectoralis major. That's just from knowledge of the movement. Uh, but, but back to my old point, if you weren't quite sure, on the concentric phase, it's usually what actually does um, the joint movement, so the triceps brachii. Okay, the triceps brachii extends the elbow with a concentric contraction. We've gone against gravity. We've pushed up against it. We've overcome it. Okay, and so quite straightforward so far. At the shoulder, we've got horizontal flexion. Some might say horizontal adduction. Okay, both will be accepted, but We've got horizontal flexion. Um, I put flexion in, horizontal flexion, so we can easily link to the pectoralis major because that's the main agonist. Adduction, you know, we're, we're not going to get down. We're, we're not doing this for the latissimus dorsi, okay? This involves the pectoralis major as one of the major muscles in the push-up. And with a push-up, it depends on your grip. The wider you put your hands, the more you will work the pectoralis major. Okay, the narrower you put your hands, the more you'll use the triceps. But we are focusing on the shoulder, and the triceps brachii do not work the shoulder. So horizontal flexion, pectoralis major, and another contract, a concentric contraction where the muscle length shortens. 
What also has been accepted in previous exam questions is flexion. So as you can see now, if you were to look down, the shoulder, uh, the arms are out in front, it's in flexion. And we should know the anterior deltoid, and it remains a concentric contraction. So I always find easier to start with the one that goes against gravity. Okay, but let's look at the downward phase. Point A, so we're up, we're starting in the up position, we know which two joints we're focusing on, and now we're down. Point B. Now here's where we're going with gravity. We're trying to resist it, but we're going in the direction with it. And already, hopefully, ringing in your brain right now is the description of an eccentric contraction. Decelerating movements where we try to lower the object slower, slowly, sorry, or ourselves slowly because we're going with gravity and we don't want to injure ourselves. Basically, we don't want to face plant right now. So the way I always do this is to figure out if it's looking for an eccentric contraction is, uh, could I face plant? And if, you, if I can, uh, it's, I know it's eccentric. And this will help you stop making the confusion because right now that elbow is in flexion. And I've marked things like this before where we get flexion because the joint, the, the joint movement will always change. So extension to flexion, but it's not the biceps brachii. So if you have knowledge of a push-up or a press-up, we do it for the triceps. And we do it concentrically and eccentrically. That downward phase where that DOMS comes in, okay, that lowering phase, the negatives sometimes termed in the gym world. That remains the main agonist. Another way to look at it is, and why I always do the concentric phase first, the one against gravity, is because whatever muscle gets you up there concentrically is going to get you, it's going to do the eccentric. Whatever does the concentric will do the eccentric. Okay? So it is not the biceps brachii, even though that does flex. The biceps brachii is working in this antagonistic pair, but the agonist has not changed. Okay, we're going with gravity, resisting it. We need to decelerate, slow down. Okay, and obviously with training, you can do push-ups faster, etc., etc. We won't go there. We'll just emphasize. Um, and then the shoulder. Okay, so if it's horizontal flexion, we obviously have horizontal extension. If you've put horizontal adduction, it's horizontal abduction. Okay. Pectoralis major does not change eccentric contraction. Still the main agonist, just a different contraction type. The muscle is lengthening as it contracts. It is decelerating. It is involved in movements which slow down. If you had put flexion, it would now be extension, but it would still be the anterior deltoid as an eccentric contraction. Okay. I hope that helped you, but we're still going to go on. Squats, another common question. We have against gravity in the upwards phase. I always start there, as I've told you, and um, the downwards phase. So I'm not going to talk as much, hopefully, on this one. <laughs> so point A, let's look at the hip, ball and socket, femur and pelvis. Let's look at the knee, hinge, femur, tibia, fibula. Point B, the upwards phase. Why do we do a squat? I mean, the hamstrings are used, but it's for gluteus maximus and quadriceps. But in the upwards phase, concentric, it's hard to go wrong. It's hard, it, it sticks to that joint movement, the muscle that is responsible for the movement at that joint. So here, the hip, it's extended, like we've pretty much had in the other two examples. What extends the hip? Gluteus maximus, main agonist. Concentric, it's shortened. Concentric contraction against gravity. The knee, extension, quadriceps group with a little star. You know what that means. Name all four. Concentric. Simple stuff. Okay. Downwards phase. Okay, you can kind of get the hint. Downwards, we've got weight on our shoulders that we're trying to take down with gravity. If we go fast, we're going to cause an injury. So we're looking to decelerate. It's a negative movement. Okay. Hip 
has gone into flexion. So all of a sudden we might be thinking iliopsoas, um, hamstrings, gluteus maximus, eccentric. I should also mention squats as a compound movement. So hamstrings, okay, can help with flexion, okay, of the hip. And they also with flexion of the knee. But because we have two joints working here, the, the, there needs to be more help. So, but the point is here, the main agonist has not changed. So, and because we're going with gravity here, we've got an A to B and a B to A, it's eccentric, okay? Meaning the knee is flexion. And yeah, we're thinking, oh, hamstrings flex the knee. Quadriceps group, eccentric. Hamstrings are, of course, working. If you do a heavy squat session, you will feel your hamstrings because they are involved in that eccentric phase supporting at the hip. All right. Um, right, so there we go. What I'm going to do now is flick back through um, some other style questions I've seen, where uh, name a physical activity or sporting action um, with adduction of a ball and socket joint or um, elbow joint. Okay, so we're just going to flick through some examples. So let's start with um, hip flexion. Well, you can get hip flexion in a backstroke leg kick. You just need to be specific in, say, the upbeat. So we look at the hip and we focus on that up, up kick. We can see we get flexion of the hip in the upbeat and the downbeat. We would have extension. So nice example of flexion there. You could also say kicking a football, striking a ball um, in that phase um, when you make contact with the ball. We're staying with swimming. We have some adduction in breaststroke. Let's take a look. Watch this pull phase of the arms. The arm pull round and in. They add to the midline of the body. Okay. Same with the legs. They pull in. Okay. So in breaststroke, we have adduction. Pronation and supination oft, sometimes comes up, can sometimes be difficult ones to answer. Um, Pronation, I'm always going top spin in racket sports. Top spin in racket sports is the go-to, in my opinion. Let's take a look at this tennis stroke here. Forehand, right now, which way is the palm facing? It's facing up, it's in supination. Point B, still in supination, but he's going to add some top spin in stage three. And as we can see now, it's down. He has rotated that radio ulnar joint. It's in pronation. The palm is now facing down. But if that diagram wasn't good enough, let's look at Roger. Supination, the pronation. Look at that red on the wrist. Supination, supination. Mm, pronation, that rotation. I'll let you see that one more time. So top spin in racket sports, table tennis, tennis is great examples of pronation. You can also have the top spin serve in tennis as well. Let's look at the opposite, supination, badminton, backhand. I often see, I saw one answer in the, the Cambridge Mark scheme which said um, forehand serve. Um, but some just hit straight up, like it just stays in supination. Or whether I would say supination in the backhand serve and you flick it out. But depending on culturally how you play badminton um, and what serve you use the most, it could become complicated when it doesn't need to be. I like the badminton backhand. So let's take a look as we flick here. As you can see, the palm's facing down if we look at his wrist. Okay, the palm is facing down. And as we get to the end stage, the palm's facing up. So we've had a rotation of the radio ulna joint, but it's supination. Okay, the palm is now facing up. But as always, let's look at a pro doing it. So let's watch this guy here. Pronation, pronation. Start the swing. Rotate with contact. Watch for the supination. Watch for the palm to face up at the end stage. There. You see that rotation. So a backhand overhead clear, okay, if you like, is way better example, in my opinion, for supination. Abduction, keep it simple. Straddle jump or the splits. 
abduction of the hip right there, away from the midline. Okay, good example, easy to use. Adduction on the landing phase. Don't even need to go away from your example. Adduction on the landing phase. Circumduction. Now, circumduction sometimes is an ass because circumduction is a combination of uh, flexion, adduction, extension, and abduction, which is why you won't have seen it in my muscles presentation of what muscles do um, circumduction because it's the muscles that do flexion, adduction, extension, and abduction. But we can make circular movements um, at the shoulder joint, in this case, um, and draw circles with our humerus. So let's take a look at it. A cricket overarm bowl. So as we can see, we've got that nice circular motion from the shoulder. That is circumduction, and it's an overarm cricket bowl. And finish up here, this is the end of this presentation. I know this is another long one. Um, golf, and I've used this for medial and lateral rotation. Um, we could focus on the shoulder, but as we've just focused on the shoulder, we'll go back to the hip. We're going to focus on his right hip. As he's, We haven't seen him swing back, but as he's swinging back, he's gone into a lateral rotation. He's opening that right hip. Okay, His foot might not show that, which is why golf is sometimes hard to use, but let's just focus on the hip. He's opened that back hip, Okay, and as he swings through, Watch the medial rotation from A to B. He's turned that hip right in. Okay, which is our medial rotation. If we were to have looked at the right shoulder, okay, in that diagram, he would have done the same thing. The right shoulder would have laterally rotated away from the midline. And as he executes his stroke, especially as he goes through to the follow through, he medially rotates. Okay, so hopefully that's helped you with your movement analysis questions. They are big in the exam. I've tried to give you sporting actions and um, things that you might see in a gym environment which involve gravity, um, especially with the eccentric contractions, and then just some more options of sporting examples. Hope that helps. Thank you.